<laughs> All right. The lady says it's recording. Here we are on the blind man in black. I am your host, Brian Snyder, and I'm here with my wife and co-host, Rachel Snyder. She is the co-founder of Odd Salon San Francisco, former editor-in-chief of Atlas Obscura, and she is currently writing a screenplay about her. I can't talk a screenplay about her father's band called Searching for Absalom. Absalom. Abscessed. Ab, 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 ah, fucking Absalom. A. This is how we're going to start 2022? Absalom. Absalom. You know, like the guy, you know, Absalom, like the book and like the guy in the Bible. I'm sorry. I this is this is how we're starting 2022. I can't talk. I think I've had a stroke. <laughs> you always think you've had a stroke. Yeah, I do. I'm drooling a little bit out of the right side of my mouth. I think something's happening. But um, this is a very special episode because it's um, this is we have a special announcement. But I, I want to talk to our host of this episode. Uh, she is an artist, graphic designer, activist, uh, Green Party member, so many other things. Nicole Ragland, thank you for hosting this show. Yeah, that tonight it is the half black woman wearing black interviewing the blind man in black. Thank you. And wow. Absalom. <laughs> Absalom. <laughs> Oy vey. So, yeah. So um, I I asked for you two to be here on your show um, so that I could talk to you about a few things that um, have been on my mind. Um, I don't know if they've been on anybody else's, but uh, I'm interested in your journey and where you both see yourselves going from here. So um, let's just start. Insane. With, that's that's where we're going <laughs> from here. That's where, Insane. That's where we're going. Uh, again, again, you have to add again at the end of that one. Um, so I, I'm sure on previous, some, some times ago, you probably talked about how you two met, which is a great story. And so I'm sure everyone's familiar. Am I correct with how you two have met? Has which, that which, which brings up the Lamberts. And I would like to know a few things that how you know the Lamberts and how, and how, how come you haven't mentioned them to me? This is not your interview. You, I, I did. I did have, well, it, it it's our inner, it's a collective, <laughs> it's, it's a cooperative interview. And, and I had a feeling it was the Lamberts who introduced you uh, from the story, but I wasn't entirely sure. Uh, How do you know I, the Lamberts? I don't think that we've told the story, Brian, have we? We oh, have. Oh. Probably. I feel like we haven't. Maybe. Well, I, I, I think it needs to be told again, because I will start with, um, I am very pivotal in you two meeting. Like, I'm, I'm a huge... I'm not sure if you're both aware that I was a, a huge part of the whole thing coming together. You mean behind the scenes with the Lamberts? Uh, it, it was just before the Lamberts and I had taken you, Brian, somewhere. And there was, there was somebody who was very interested in you. And I was not interested in this person being interested in you. <laughs> and and I I you you said oh you know I took you uh, to a radio station you had some business there you asked me oh we were someplace and you said oh can you give me a ride and I was like oh sure and I got there and you're like okay you could go now and the energy was off for me with this person and so I said oh no I'm going to wait. And you're like, no, you can go. And I was like, no, I, I, I'm waiting right here. And I sat down because I decided and this person was flirting with you and didn't like me being there. And we had a weird exchange that you probably weren't aware of. I didn't see, of. no. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was really cringy and awkward. The things that I live for, I live for these moments because I'm never cringy or awkward. It's always other people going, oh, this is weird. And I'm always like, oh, this is going to be a great story later is always my take. And so I refused to leave. And 
you came, you came down the stairs. We got into a fight when you were walking down the stairs, you and I, I think you were totally annoyed with me. I don't think we got into an argument. I don't We got into an argument. You, you were annoyed. You have trouble admitting it, but you were really annoyed with me. (laughs) And, and so that just laid the groundwork for you two to be able to meet because I, I told this story to someone and they said, you cock blocked Brian. I said, absolutely. Yeah, that's what that is. I, Who's I, the someone? I think, Why is there so I much mystery? What's with I the mystery? I completely cock blocked Brian. It was uh, uh, your, I, I think Tor and Enone were on your show. Who? Tor and Enone? Yeah, yeah. So it was them. And I was telling them the story and they proceeded to tell me how awful I was because I I cock blocked you. And I said, no, no, no. I I left the door open for Rachel is what I was doing. I I really felt that. So then. (laughs) And then we met after. So then the Lamberts happened. Then the Lamberts happened. (laughs) So, so so let's, before we get into all that, um, we want to make an announcement. Um, to everyone listening and watching on YouTube and are watching on YouTube and listening on Apple podcast, we are going to end this podcast on the hundredth episode because Rachel and I are going to start a new podcast. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but we're excited. And uh, so we're going to probably be discussing it through the uh, winding down of the episodes. So uh, I, I wanted to throw that out there. And put it out in the universe. Um, we're also looking for a collaborator. Collabor- fucking me- hey, man, I can't talk. To- Some you're gonna. I'm glad you're hosting because I this is this is horrible. I, I can't. You're, speak. you're looking. At, I'm hearing that you're looking for a collaborator. Col- collaborator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, looking for collaboration. And um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let you host because I'm when, I'm when is when is the hundredth episode i don't know it's when it happens we're on like uh right now i think it's like 72 this is 73 i think well there's i have others that are that that have been recorded that i haven't uh um, well what, as far as what's posted the last one was posted was 72 so yeah yeah so we're on 72 but it's oh we're close yeah. we better come up with something quick Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to the to the animals outside. So, Go ahead. so so after after the cock blocking, you you met Rachel like shortly after, I, I believe it was like well what after. happened was is um I was working with Mr. Lambert uh at my office and we were gonna do a video project and um now hold on, hold on. I think I should tell my part first. Okay. As, as the host, I agree. Cause I think it, I think it predates, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure we'd have to ask the Lamberts, but um, I had just moved back to town um, because I have a court order that would made me move back to town. And um, I had started up Posey Field Pockets again, was, which was, was my death positive uh, project where I was doing events and yada yada. And I was being interviewed for the union about it um, because we had a really great relaunch and it was doing really well. Um, and Liam was, who was interviewing me because he was, well, he was on the board. He was doing something with the union at the time. And he, um, pockets, pockets, pockets. We talked about it, did the interview. And then he said, um, is there anything else that you're working on? And I said, there is, I'm working on a screenplay about my father. Um, and it's really hard because I don't, I've never written a screenplay before. I don't, I worked in Hollywood for many years and I, I kind of understand, I understand the film industry, but writing a script is really hard and I don't have, I'm not in LA, so I don't have the connections I'm used to having or the help I'm used to having. And it's just really challenging. And he said, what did he say? Do you have any interest in meeting a film director who's now blind and he's a former pornographer who is now doing shock disability films? And I said, yes, (laughs) yes, I do. I have so much interest in that for all kinds of reasons like that just I thought that was and I was thinking like well that's that's a great intro like this person must be fascinating first of all and second of all I just need to sit down with someone and pick their brain and 
if he's doing, if he's like an actual film director who's who's now got projects going on, he's not gonna like wanna help me necessarily, but he will probably let me pick his brain on just some stuff about the process of writing the script and all that. And so he said, okay, um, well, I'll, I'll get you in touch with him because I work with him at free. Um, and then his wife emailed me or messaged me and said, did you look at Brian's uh, Facebook page? And I said, no, why? I think you probably should look at it. He's very handsome. I said, I don't care. And she said, no, really, I, I, he's, he's very, and he's kind of your type. And I said, oh, even more of a reason to not care. No, thank you. And then I did look at his profile and he was tall and dark and handsome and Ella in the suit. And I was like, oh, for fuck, totally my type. Even more reason not to, not to care. We're just, we're talking shop. I would just want to ask him some questions. It's a, it's a work, you know, thing. And then I found a video on, well, cause I was going through his stuff, of course, to see if he was a serial killer. And um, he had this video about when he was in, at an airport and he was talking about um, losing his sight and losing his ability to work in film and about how the world was fading around him and um, the loss. I was not at an airport, by the way. Oh, whatever, Brian. I was in <laughs> Dallas. Okay, well, wherever you were, you were traveling. Dallas, Dallas does have an airport. I, I it can't does, confirm. but I was in a hotel can, room. But okay, what, can, is that is that is that relevant to the story? Is that something? De- details are important. Okay, is that worth interrupting me for? Yes. <laughs> he was they're, they're a little. They're a little. Details are are important. I'm not sure that one was, but yes. Anyway, well, because if he was <laughs> in a ho- if he was in a hotel, he might not have had pants on. Oh, I, yeah, no, I guess you're right. In an airport, he would definitely be having pants on. Pants he on. had pants on, probably. Uh, he, it was only from like here down, so I, or up, so I don't know. Anyway, um, he was talking about that loss and about how that had always been his, you know, he'd always been a visual person, he'd always dreamed about working in film and you know, on stage and yeah, yeah. And um, I burst into tears because A, he seemed so kind and so, uh, you know, emotionally like, locked into the world or, or whatever and also I had suffered a similar loss of my career when I got cancer while my writing career was taking off and it was not something that anyone really gave a shit about or felt bad about me for you know there was a whole lot of well you're alive so why do you care but of course I cared because the train was I, I got an opportunity and the, and the train left without me because I couldn't take it and anyone who's in the entertainment industry at all uh, who's ever tried to make it in the entertainment industry knows that that's that's the biggest factor is the luck, the luck of that opportunity stopping at the station. And if you don't get on, it's not going to come back. You're never, you know, so I missed my train and Brian missed his train. And that was something I really connected with him on because here, at least not a lot of people had had that experience, had a career just like right there, uh, like your dream job and your dream career there and then have it taken away by your own body, to, you know, fucking you over. And, and there was no one that I ever talked to about it that wasn't thinking, you know, I was being kind of a baby about it. Like, well, you can, you can still write, you can write a different book. Okay, but that's just not how it works. So then I got intrigued kind of on a more personal level. And then we met, no, then we started texting. Okay, Brian, now you can tell your side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I have a uh, host? Do I have permission to speak? I, I feel like your side might not be as interesting. I, I almost want Rachel to tell the whole story but I'm, yeah. I'm kidding i'm kidding so <laughs> <laughs> no i mean she is a lot she yeah i mean I, no, it prob- that, I i i think it's really interesting that uh, you had a a, a pre-connection a a four yeah. connection um so i i don't know did you also experience a pre-connection from what they said about Rachel, Brian? No, no. What happened was, is the only, this is how it started for me. Okay. So I was working with Mr. Lambert uh, at the office and we were working on a video together. And the whole point was, is he was supposed to handle the equipment because although I knew how to use the equipment, I could not see to use the equipment. So the idea was he was supposed to be the camera operator and uh, we would create this video. And so weeks before I said, okay, now learn how to use the camera. Here's the the manual, Um, get familiar with it. Um, I'll help you with whatever you need. Um, And so we were gonna set up the evening before because the, uh, what we were, 
uh, going to do the production in the morning. And so we started setting up in the late afternoon. I thought we were going to be done by like, you know, six or seven or whatever. And we were there at 10 until 10 PM. And I was tired and frustrated. And like, I knew that he hadn't really done any work to like know how to use the equipment because he took the camera and tried to put it on a light tripod. And so <laughs> I was like, fuck, this is okay. So <laughs> I was trying to do the audio and uh, connect, uh, I think a shotgun mic or something to the camera. And I was, I was looking for um, um, a female XLR adapter or something like that. And I started looking around. I'm like, I need a female XLR. And then I just sighed and went, I need a female. And I think what happened was by that point, his wife was there, Mrs. Lambert, and she heard what I said. And I think she picked up on that. And that's where I think it, I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know. I didn't ask her, but I'm guessing that planted the seed for her to connect Rachel with me. And because uh, I think a, a few days later, she said, can I, I have a, some, a friend that uh, would like to talk to you. And I was like, all right, you know, and I was kind of thinking, you know, I don't know. I was like, I'm not going to call her. She gave me that. Yeah, sorry. She gave me your phone number, Rachel. And I was like, I'm not going to call her. If she calls me, I'll, 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 you know, we'll see what happens. And so she texted me and that's where we left off. Well, and I think it's important to note that I was not, this was not presented to me as any sort of date thing. Like I, I was saying I needed, I wished I could talk to someone who made films who, who I could, you know, pick their brain, like in a work, you know, cause I was in LA for 10 years and that's, that's normal. You just, you can totally cold call strangers and be like, hi, I got your number from so-and-so. I was wondering if you want to sit down and have some coffee with me. I want to ask you, you know, like that's, that's fine. It was presented to Brian as a date. So he had a totally different idea coming into it than I did. I, yeah, I, I, I was like, I'm not going to call because uh, I, I doubt it's going to work. I was like, what are the chances of, you know, this, a blind, uh, you know, hey, uh, blind date actually working? Well, and I, I had been very clear with the Lamberts both that I would um, rather cut my own face off than be in a relationship at that time. <laughs> I had no interest in another race at all. And, and it wasn't, you know, when Lane and I were talking about it, it was completely a business thing. And then when Mrs. Lambert got involved, she's like, oh, he's cute. I'm like, don't care. And, and so I was like, well, that's cute. And I, I appreciate the, the thought, but I'm not, that's not what I'm interested in doing. Um, but I think Brian, I had no idea that Brian was being, it was being sold to Brian as a date straight across. Like, I think, I don't even know, did they even mention the script to you at all when they told but you? I, about I think through you two texting though it became clear that there was a connection well right? then yeah then, then i texted him um because and yeah i didn't even know you were going to call me or anything i just assumed like no, you, number and i was gonna text you and yeah and you and you texted me and then within the like first few words like i knew she told me mrs lambert told me <laughs> mrs. Mrs. Lambert. <laughs> i don't know why we're calling her that I, I just like it. Let's just call him Mr. and Mrs. Lambert. So <laughs> Mrs. Lambert <laughs> said <laughs> to me that you had cancer and I didn't know what type. Well, but it started before, I mean, we started flirting instantly, which was not my MO at all, typically. Um, but I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I was, I'm pulling up the, cause I have the text cause we were going to try to do something with it. Cause it's funny, but I just asked, I said, Hey, you know, the Lamberts wanted um, convince me that we should get to know each other, which of course it now in retrospect, if he was thinking it was a date, that would probably was a, <laughs> sounded, you know, forward. Um, they feel we have some common interests, uh, blah, 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 coffee next week. And he said, hello, uh, you know, Brian, Brian, super nicey, nicey plate plate. Uh, <laughs> Um, he said, that's what that, I wrote. Basically, he said, are you available for grapefruit juice? I'm bored. I'm all booked up for coffee, but uh, I have openings for grapefruit and tomato juice. I may also have an opening for Clamato, but I'll have to check my iCal beverage calendar. Wait, I'm available on Sunday or Monday for espresso. If those days don't work, let me know what's most convenient for you. And I'm like, what? I feel like you shouldn't have responded after that. Right. No, that's, yeah, that would have been. I, I mean, that's where the magic. Mean, because that was so lame, or I didn't just... even know what to do with that. I'm just like, oh, for, oh, he thinks he's funny. Okay, 
Okay. I, <laughs> um, I, I apparent what's really clear to me is I didn't need to cock block Brian that first time. I think he would have done it for himself after hearing it. that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. And I, but I will say I don't I don't think anything would have materialized from that what that situation. I I you know I mean I could have pursued that after after that evening and I didn't. I feel like I ruined it. <laughs> just just admit that she ruined it and let it. I, All right, I'm I'll, pretty, I'll leave I'm it pretty sure I ruined it. I'm really good at ruining things. So. <laughs> so, so that's what Rachel I, says to me. That you ruin stuff or that I ruin stuff? No, that I ruin stuff. No, I don't say that to you. You, you don't. About? But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> You're ruining this right now. <laughs> It's true. So, true. so I didn't, I didn't know. I, I was like, all right, I'll play. I'll, okay. He must be funny. I'll play along. And I, I said, I'm all booked up for my grapefruit days. I have a Clamato open, but it's a little intimate for first beverage. Don't you think? Because Clamato really, that's gross and weird, weird thing to say. Um, I said, uh, unless you want to make out after when you say Clamato, that's basically what you're saying. Right. So I was just going to like double down, down to make it awkward. So he'd stop, but it didn't work. Now I know that we're married and I know him. I realized that was the wrong direction to take with him <laughs> but, but I, was just, I, I wanted to just kind of like put a cork in it in that and move on to you know actually making plans and then I said Monday I usually stick to kombucha but I'm willing to make an exception just kidding kombucha is disgusting not kidding about Monday which is funny because later on I, he had me drinking kombucha on a regular basis I liked it um and he said that's funny but Clamato doesn't seem intimate right it's like a Georgia O'Keeffe painting by the way you made me laugh out loud and then I said, Clamato, how dare you, sir? And then it just it went from there. We were just being ridiculous. Um, and it went back and forth from being super awkward to being funny, to being awkward to funny. And that's kind of, you know, the beautiful the combination that is Brian Snyder and I. is <laughs> Awkward, funny, awkward, funny, uncomfortable, funny, it, inappropriate, funny. But it was, it was only a few minutes in, I would say maybe about 10 minutes. And we keep texting because we have one-liners, you know, we're having like one-offs and I'm like, okay, I have to keep up with him and I have to, this is obviously a test and I'm not going to get my, my questions answered from him. And if I don't keep up, so I did, so I was trying to keep up. And then he said, he mentioned that the Lamberts had told me I had cancer and he asked me what kind, do you mind me asking what kind very politely? And I, so I started to type out prostate and before I could hit send, I got testicular question mark. And that was it. That's how he we fell you. in love at then that moment. He had you at testicular. He had me at mm. testicular cancer. Um, because that was fucking funny. I mean, <laughs> who, who has the balls to ask somebody who, to say that to somebody? <laughs> like, well, you know. <laughs> about cancer. In, like, that's, that's funny. In my mind, because I was like, it was really important that whether whatever happened, whether we become friends or lovers, I know you don't like that. Hate that. Why do you have to say I, I hate that word too. <laughs> it's, it's, be, it's the way, it's the way that men say it. Right? Love they us. put, we were, we they put the emphasis on the L, which makes it really creepy, no matter who's <laughs> We've been saying it a lot to bother me lately. So in either case, my point is that I thought that if she didn't laugh at that, it wasn't going to work at all, either, even as a friend. I thought there's, and that was really important to me is that I, I wanted, you know, whatever was going to happen between us that we laughed together. That was really important to me. Well, and we were making the same joke, basically. That was the yeah. other thing was that we ha clearly we had the same sense of humor because I was typing pretty much the exact same joke back. And that's, I think that's what, it wasn't so much that he had the, the, the balls to say that it was also that it, he was on the, going in the same direction I was with it <laughs> and that was it then we just then we were just flirting mercilessly and he asked me a bunch of really fucking weird questions that I <laughs> tried to answer to the best because like, I wasn't I, I didn't know why like he's so weird like he asked weird questions right he just asked tons of really bizarre questions and he spit fires them so I'm not even getting a chance to answer them and so I'm like I don't what is, what, what is the what is the matter with him can you what? give me one example of a weird question yeah you asked me if i was a vampire or something like that that was one you asked me uh if i was going to have uh if i went to if i was a swinger um let's see you asked me if you asked me i'm sure i can find some good ones 
but hey, I'm wondering why you went out with him, Rachel. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody needs to know i why was trying to that. write this fucking screenplay <laughs> i really oh. wanted to ask him these questions i really needed to talk to someone who had been in the industry and who could just give me a a like a baseline to work from because i'm trying to write in a format i've never written before and i'm and i'm doing it cold and i have no like i'm used to being around a ton of people that are doing that and and i'm here in this area where no one's doing it and i found somebody who's from there and knows and and, and so d- despite the weinstein vibe you move forward i figured he's blind so i could wait a minute where was where's the weinstein vibe come into this at all the the swing do you swing yeah, there's got to be some context to that. I'm sure I, I, there wasn't. No, there was not. I feel like <laughs> vam, vampire vampires suck blood. There's a weird connotation yeah. there. Sucking. You were asking weird, like this. Sex, for sure. It, well, knowing Brian as well as I know Brian, there was absolutely nothing sexual about it. I think he was he was asking genuine questions. Like I don't think yeah, he was just curious was, about. Yeah, just. I feel like know. there's context. I, I I think those questions are out of context. And no, it's not fair. No, they're not. Out of, the the context is is that you ask a bunch of really weird and intimate questions of people all the time, and I didn't I didn't know at the time if that you were just a weird guy um or if brian were- brian has never asked me if i was a swinger though rachel um that's i my- i think he might have asked me if i was a vampire but but not a swinger you asked me if i was death and if i had come for you that was something that you asked me and then you made a joke about that <laughs> that's God- a fair question i asked that a lot of people <laughs> if they're deaf mm-hmm. yeah and then you said, and then you said, what if death was one of us, just a slog like slob like one of us? Oh, death. Oh, you thought death. like you you T-H-F. thought like hearing impaired. I thought it. I thought yes. Death. No, I, I heard death. It was death. Death. Yes, I he thought I was death. Or he asked me if I was death, and I'd come for him. I yeah, it was totally lost on that me. Better? That better. Somebody was death. <laughs> I had a feeling that was what you. you heard, but I was yeah. I thought, oh, I'll let it go. <sighs> oh. Um, oh, are we all exhausted now is this we're already oh. all exhausted <laughs> <laughs> i'm exhausted how about the storm did you nicole how did you get through that but were you, you all right cannot you cannot help hosting we we were talking about rachel and brian and meeting and, <laughs> and then now we want to know everybody wants to know why rachel stuck through it despite the the weird creepy vibes you were giving. <laughs> so I, I asked I asked that question every day. Sometimes I ask myself. Oh, uh, Rachel's not Rachel's not answering. So but Brian's, so, but Brian's not creepy. He's just a weirdo. He but I mean it's hard to tell at first. But he I don't like I said he doesn't he doesn't speak like that to everybody. He's very over polite and over formal typically. Do you, do you think the, the polite my, do you think that politeness is genuine? This is a conversation I have with myself all the time about Brian. That's yeah, a lot of people are off put by my politeness. I've, I, you're not the first person that has said that. People are offended by my politeness. I'm, I'm not offended by it. Where does it come from? Uh, to be honest, you want, a, you want a real honest answer? Or do you want- No, you- lie, lie to me. Lie to me like all uh, men do. <laughs> the, 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 it, it, when you asked me that question, my first response was self-protection. Hmm. I, against or just it? Were you always polite, or is the politeness a a side? What did it grow out of losing your sight in hearing? I I feel like. Um, I mean, I always, you know, I, I feel like I want, I was gen, uh, genuinely, gen, generally polite. I was going to say genuinely, but it morphed. But um, I think for, for most, for the most part, but I think it, it became more so as I lost my eyesight because being, becoming more vulnerable. And um, I, I think, I think uh, it, it reminds me of your father, Rachel, like when he was in the hospital, like he didn't want to piss anybody off. Right. 
I think it's it's similar to that. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely, um, especially over text, he's very proper, and mm -hmm. has these kind of stock things that he says. And so, and keep in mind, you know, we're meeting by text, so he's not as he's not really like that in person. He's very personable and he's very charming, but um, in writing, he's so overly. Uh, I'm getting annoyed with myself. It's like my proper. politeness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I see, I absolutely see it. And then, you know, in person when he's meeting new people or whatever, he is very polite and guard and he asks a lot of questions and he doesn't answer many. And I, it, I've definitely seen it as a self-protection thing. I, I think the the questions are his way of stopping people from asking him questions. Well, yeah, absolutely. Cause once you start asking him anything, he totally, he, he wiggles his way out of that, like immediately like he already has, has started doing, like he's uncomfortable. <laughs> what about the yeah. storm? Does anybody want to talk about the storm? <laughs> somewhere, because it was so funny, I don't know where it is, but somewhere I have a, an entire, on my drive, I have a list of <laughs> every question, like I went through, because he says, whenever he doesn't want to talk about something anymore that you're talking about, he goes, by the way, and he changes the subject. So you'll be like, you don't well, like by my the way, transitions. But they they aren't really transitions if they're abrupt. Exactly. Yeah, and they're and they're completely non sequiturs. So you're like yada yada. Mm -hmm. I'm having this conversation. He's like, oh oh, I'm sorry. By the way, um, did, how was the storm for you? Like, I'm I'm done talking about that. Now we're going to talk about what I was actually thinking about while you were talking. And I have a list somewhere <laughs> of all the by the ways that he's asked me, and they're hilarious. And there's like hundreds of them because he does it by text too. I don't know why you have to do it by text, but it's the same in text. He'll say by the way. <laughs> I'll change the subject. <laughs> I, so Are, was that a question or or that was just a, a, a observation? <laughs> observation for sure, for sure. So so then you both had your first date, right? Yes. Yeah, we went we met at the Broad Street Cafe, which is no longer in existence, which surprises me because they had the largest outdoor seating during COVID. I don't understand why they didn't make it. The, the new business there is woman owned and supports small businesses and women owned businesses. So it, it's a good thing. I, and they have, they still have the outdoor seating area. I don't know if you've been. I, I didn't even know there was anything there. There is. Oh. There is. I, I don't uh, get around it, much anymore. So I don't, I've, I don't. I believe it's called Cosmos. Okay. I could be wrong. I'm often wrong. So you met at the cafe mm -hmm. and had coffee, I take it, despite Brian wanting Clamato. Which, which I don't, why would you ever say that to anybody right away? I, I don't think anyone actually drinks it. I did. Okay, well, there, there you go. <laughs> another blaring flaw found yeah, in Brian. I'm glad that got worked out after the wedding. Yet another so. one. Uh, I have many. <sighs> so glad I can't smell your breath right now. My breath is, <laughs> is, is scopey fresh. Oh, not Clamato. <laughs> and, and so when you first met... What I know Rachel's first impression was that you're handsome and tall and, and all of that and polite. Uh, what was your first impression, Brian? I, she, she made me laugh. And I, I was drawn to her sense of humor and her spirit and her energy. And uh, I always say this, she, she makes me feel alive. And I often don't feel alive. I mean, even now, like every moment of my existence is trying to feel like I'm here on this planet because I don't feel like I'm here. I don't, you asked me, you know, you, you, you were laughing about me doing the coffee pot thing this evening, putting water in it. I wasn't and laughing. Nobody was laughing. I wasn't laughing. Well, you, 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 I, I know, I know you're, you're fascinated by it. Well, cause, yeah. cause. Because your mom saw me watching you, was, and so I had to. So I was just explaining why I was watching you. <laughs> so I the reason I do that is because I don't feel like I'm here. That's so. That's the reason why I do all those things is because I don't feel like I feel like a ghost. I feel like I'm. I don't feel alive, and 
So I have to do things to remind me that I'm here that I, because if I don't like the way my memory works has always been visual. Like if I have every thought that I have is attached to some type of image. And as I lost my eyesight, it's, it's been uh, a loss of, 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 of self-actualization, a loss of, of feeling like I'm present. And so like, throughout my life, if I wanted to remember something, I could remember it visually because of, okay, I was thinking this because I was looking at um, the keys on the table. You know what I mean? I, I can remember moments and go, okay, I, that's, I was there at that moment. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't have that anymore. So um, in essence, you make me feel alive. Me? Were you talking to me? No, I, 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 I rarely, Rachel? it's been a year since we, <laughs> we've, we've, we've uh, had any contact. You, you know, I, I, I think with what you were saying that I think a lot of people can identify with that now through the pandemic, um, because people are, you know, have been isolated, especially people with underlying health conditions, you know, they have to be so much more careful than the rest of us. Um, and so there is that isolation of, of not interacting and getting, it's not really a validation, but just that connection from somebody else that, oh, what I just said is true, or my thoughts are valid, you know, just things like that. Um, my partner, David, uh, we were talking about because people who get COVID and they lose their sense of smell and taste and how difficult that would be for us because we're huge foodies and love food and our day revolves around what we're gonna eat for breakfast, lunch and dinner, basically. And that losing that you, and he had said that he read somewhere that the lead singer of NXS, I forget his name, who committed suicide. Michael Hutchins. That Michael Hutchins, he had a brain injury and lost his sense of smell. And the sense of smell is so important to your sense of self and people just don't realize how much smells ha ha create connections with our brain for us and, and things like that. So I and think that a lot, yeah, right? and I, oh, huge, huge, right? And that was, they believe was part of his depression. And so I think, you know, everyone's isolated and kind of alone, but also not alone because there is this collective loss of all of these things that remind us of, of who we are. Sorry. Yeah, so every, so everybody's getting a little taste, a little taste of, of that isolation. And by the way, the coffee thing is one of his OCD ticks that he does that I, I'm always watching him with that stuff. And because that's the other thing he can't, you know, I think if you, if you're sighted, you can, like look around first and then, you know, whatever. but he doesn't, you know, it's about, so he doesn't know if I'm watching him or not, but he does this thing with the coffee pot every night where he, he touches the bottom of it and taps it a few times or whatever. And I'm just always fascinated because it's always different. He's got a different pattern each time, a kind of different. So anyway, I decided that we should explain what, <laughs> what that was, but yeah, it, it, I'm the, the point of it is to make sure funny. I don't think it, to, I'm not to, laughing at him. I just am interested in it because it's weird and I like it to make sure it's empty. That's first and foremost. And then, but it, the whole ritual is, is to, to, to make sure I remember that that was the way it was, that it was empty. And I don't know why I, I care. It doesn't make any sense, but the, for whatever reason, I'm concerned about that. And then but the main thing, the reason I do that or, um, you know, wash my hands excessively, it's because I, I don't know, I just feel a, that's a, you know, trying to protect myself to thing, but it's also to remember that I'm here. And that's why I turn up the water so hot is because it, I can feel that, you know, it reminds okay. me of the Johnny Cash version of hurt. That's okay. Right? Cause I turned the water heater down so that you can't. Okay. Not okay. enough. I know I'm going to turn it down again. I'm, I'm it's over 120 still, so I, I can't take it below that or mess with the dishwasher. But uh, yeah, expect a, a lower temperature in the next. It's fine. I, I I I I this is something I'll work on for my 
uh, resolution for this year. It's to not scald your hands off. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, I think the sink in the bathroom is smelling like rotting flesh. A little, yeah. I was like, I was smelling it like before I left and I'm not smelling it, but it just was wafting up. <laughs> what? Yeah, see what ticks are happening in there that I don't know about. It was wafting up and I was like, this smells like sulfur, like hell. And I'm like, maybe it's I, just my flesh rotting in the sink. I huh? need to stop this, this trajectory because it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody wants to hear this. Nobody. Somebody um, does. <laughs> nobody does. Nobody does. <laughs> Ex- yeah. Ra- Rachel and I have a theory that you might be a serial killer. Is this true? I have a bit. If you would have gone to my uh, last uh, set, you would have. Uh, I had a whole bit on that. In January? Yeah. It's available on YouTube on the Blind Man in Black. January 8th, stand up <laughs> comedy, n- new uh, material. And yes, he did. He did go into his. Uh, piddly excuse as to why he couldn't be a serial killer oh he's saying that he couldn't which yeah. is what every serial killer actually says say, it can't exactly. be me because and instead you know, he's, of... he's adding all these things that, like well because because i wouldn't know i can't see my way around I'm okay okay there, there had to be specific things like you're not in a house you don't recognize you're in your own house or you know a house that's your kill house so you know the house already so you don't add that factor in like that means you couldn't be one you could be in certain circumstances. And if you can move around a house without being able to see and the other person can't because they don't know the house, then you have an advantage because you can have all the lights out. And, you know, but I, I like I the lambs when he has a night vision, right? And, and he's like, but, but, but is, nobody, nobody could actually prove that Brian can't see. That's true. right there. Done. I think a lot nice of drop. people, I, I have a, 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 a lot of people that can verify that I'm blind. I mean, okay. that, that would have to be, I mean, I would have to be a, a mad genius to spend my entire life trying to prove that in a very slow, painful way. But you don't ha- you wear glasses. So that right there. Brian, Brian, that's, that's called nice. an alibi. That's called an alibi. And that is what serial killers do is they spend their entire lifetime building their alibi. Yeah. Kaiser so say. Oh, he, he wasn't really a serial killer, though. Well, no, but I'm just saying it's the same no. thing. Like Brian walks out of the police, right? And he throws on his yeah. glass, throws the cane and yeah, lets the dog punches go. someone. Punches and, and, someone I, and I the smoke dog. a cigarette like this. <laughs> Grabs a paper and a couple books and hails a cab. Yeah, exactly. It's suspect. So, right? Brian, what is one movie that you miss watching visually? I know you can hear movies, but what is one movie where you just absolutely miss the visuals? Um, well, it's odd. I mean, I, my first thought was uh, what dreams may come because there's some very beautiful visuals of um, in there. I mean, I, I don't even like that movie. I don't, I, I've seen it once, but I remember there's some beautiful visuals in it. Um, but I think my favorite movie of all time is the big Lebowski. And ah. e- even though um, um, it's does not, you know, there's some visual moments that are pretty impressive in it, but uh I, I don't know. I just, I just, I, I, it's not even really that it's just being able to see the, like, I'll give you an example of something that I really miss. Um, and I, and I remember talking about it with Rachel, even before, it, you know, I, I've, I've lost it is that, you know, that in the evening, uh, when the sun's going down and it's that soft light and it's against the trees and the grass and it illuminates everything in such a beautiful, soft, gentle way. I miss seeing that. The, the Marty Bell moment. Is, isn't that that painter's name who makes those really awful paintings? I don't know. Marty Bell? I don't know mm-hmm. who that is. Kincaid. Kincaid? Oh, Thomas okay. Kincaid. 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 I don't know. I don't know his work that well. I know it's in malls, but other than that. They, he always captures <laughs> that that warm so, it's a warm soft light 
Let's not muddle my experience with the uh, Thomas Kincaid mall, mall art. But that's what I do. I, I muddle everybody's <laughs> experiences. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of movies. I love movies. I love, I love the visual. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, uh, when I was uh, directing theater, I, I, I was working in an experimental way, very similar to what uh, I was trying to emulate Robert Wilson, which was very pretty much all visual. And um yeah, there, I miss everything in relation. I just, I miss, I miss being able to walk into a room and very quickly assess what is happening mm -hmm. and, and, and not thinking about it. I miss moving around without having to think about uh, where things are just very, very rapidly, like ass assessing a situation. And, and uh, because I think one of the things about being blind is it's, it's, it's a time suck. And um, I have to, you know, it, it takes me so long to do everything now. Um, and I, I, I get angry about that. I'm like, I'm losing so much time and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 43 years old now. And, uh, and I, I, I need this time and I don't, I'm losing it. And, uh, because of just how I have to function. Um, and so wah, wah. Uh, we recently got HBO and I <laughs> because I wanted now this is related, Brian. I wanted to show him Carnival, which is one of my favorite, favorite. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. And it's just too I, I started sitting with me, but it was just too visual. There was no way for me to explain without without being able to see it, it's not nearly as good if you think about oh, no, it. Like it, that, it's no, all the visual. It's it's all it's all visual. You're absolutely it's right. Beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful show. But and I was just like, ah, oh, this sucks because I can't. There's no point in me trying to sit here and explain it to him. It, it won't. He won't get it at all because it isn't a verbal thing. Like the story isn't the important part. It's the it's the art direction and everything. So um, he might not be able to think of any particular movie that he does. But there's things that, that I wish I could show him now mm -hmm. that I can't, and that there's no use in. Shut it. The, dogs and the kids outside um <laughs> but yeah there's no use in in you know even trying because it's just it, it would just be disappointing for him and then well I, there, I mean audio description is really helpful and i'm grateful for audio description um and um uh, but i will say that some movies that i know very well and i know what's happening i i get upset sometimes because i'm like ah, oh, they're not describing this little detail that makes this scene hilarious but you have uh, a memory of it. You does that not translate for you, or are you not no. building it? Or I'll tell you why. Because, uh, and it may be just because of how my brain works. Um, I think all of my memories in my life are are tainted with how I how I, I don't see now. And what I mean by that is, I don't things aren't vivid anymore, even in my imagination, except maybe when I dream, um, when I dream, I'll, I, things are, are pretty vivid, but, um, but I have to, because there's so much visual noise all the time, it, it makes it very difficult for me to even to imagine things in a vivid, clearer way. And, um, I mean, I can, they're just snapshots. They're not like a movie. They're not fluid and, and like transitioning, you know. Um, I, I mean, that's how I feel. I mean, they might, they may be a little bit more in that, in that sense that they are like that. And I'm not aware of it, but I, I feel like they're tainted because this, this is, it's just noise. All I have is noise all the time. Well, I think everybody's memory is snapshots, but you can have a visual reminder that will bring back more details, right? Like, all of our memories get distorted and weird over time. But if you can look at a photo and be like, oh, oh, right. That wasn't this person that was with me. It was that person. And no, oh, I that was a year after I thought it was, or, you know, like. Well, you, you, what, what, what I mean is I think people that are sighted, their memories are reinforced by what they're seeing now. Right. So it's like very similar. You mentioned Nicole about the smell thing, like a smell, you smell something, an aroma, uh, like a pine tree or something. And, and it brings back a me very vivid memory of something. It's the same way with visual, like you're, it's reinforcing your visual memories. 
Also, maybe a reminder of the gravity of the loss. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Like constant. Yeah. And I'm really good at describing TV shows and stuff. Like, I'm bad at it. Would no, it you, you, help? You, do, you do well. <laughs> would it would it help Brian to to work I mean what I'm hearing is that you almost feel like you you yourself are an unreliable narrator I I feel like I I, I was thinking about this th this morning about my memory and I I don't know I don't know I I I feel like I'm a moron <laughs> and and I realize that now more than ever like I, I feel like uh, there's things that I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm having this this very um, intense realization about myself and and how I am in relation to the world, and it's not necessarily horrible. It's it's just kind of a, it's a realistic view of myself, and and. Uh, I feel like I don't know. I I I I was thinking about how I don't remember. Like I was thinking about you know I spent so much time in the theater doing plays and and things like that. And there are there are plays that are well known that like I don't even remember that well. And I was like, man, like where did the where did those go? Where did that information go? And um. And so. See, this is my point. I'm a Warren. I don't even remember what what the what the. Uh, what the point of what I was saying? Well, I, I will tell you, Brian, that I'm not a moron. I, I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. But I actually don't remember movies and books. I remember nothing. All I'll remember is if I liked it or not. And so sometimes my, my partner will say, oh, you saw we saw that together. And I'll insist that I didn't see it. And then he'll start saying things. And I'll say, well, that's not how I remember. And I'll only remember like maybe a very specific part of the movie. And that is the whole movie for me. And it really had nothing to do with the plot. It was just what my takeaway was. And so I think we're all unreliable narrators. It's just that sighted people get that visual confirmation that you're talking about. Um, but for me, I get a, a visual confirmation that I was absolutely wrong all the time. But, <laughs> I, but also, I, I'm not a moron. So you're much better than I am. And so therefore, you're not a moron. <laughs> I, I mean, but I don't mind. I don't mind think... it. I, don't, I really don't. Because I, I, I feel like I, for the first time in my entire life, I know who I am. And, and I'm finally like embracing it. And, and, and it's and, a moron. And it's yeah. A moron. I mean, I guess maybe maybe I should say I'm the fool to quote Izzy Twinsky. Um, <laughs> My mom's leather. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I feel like my entire life has been has been directed towards comedy in one way or another. And even recently, I've, I've been realizing that more and more is that like I had the, I was I was listening. Rachel, remember the audio book I was listening to yesterday? Yeah. Uh, it was about the improv. There's one in LA and there was one in New York. And um, I remember, I didn't even think about this. I haven't thought about it in years, but I remember I used to watch on A&E when I was like in eighth grade evening at the improv. It was on, do you remember that? And it was like, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I was older were, than the eighth grade though. And, um, but it was in the nineties, early nineties, right? We're older. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I remember uh, watching that and I remember I loved it. And I, I, I was like, I didn't even think about that for years and how much that influenced me. And, but my point is that like, I feel like I have a better understanding who, who, of, of who I am. I'm trying not that when you, when you met me, Nicole, uh, I was trying to be somebody and, and I, I, I'm not that person. I'm not an organizer. I'm not, um, uh, somebody that, you know, I'm, I'm not that person. I wanted to be that person, but I'm really not that person, uh, like an activist and, and all that shit. So. I'm not either. I have very low tolerance for people, all people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard to be an organizer <laughs> if you hate people. <laughs> it, it is. It, it, tell me about it, Rachel. <laughs> 
that's that's why I kind of operate as a lone wolf and that kind of stuff because it's it's hard to. Yeah, Pan- pandemic's been great for me. Yeah. Been isolated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought the blind thing would be really helpful in in terms of inspiring people, and 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 it just doesn't doesn't do anything. <laughs> you, so you were, you had a trope about yourself that you were going to be the magical blind guy. Yeah, I thought oh. I thought I thought that would be something that. Well, I was trying to find um, something that I could do that mm-hmm. would that would uh, I don't know. Uh, that, that that I could use the blind thing as as a way to help people and and I I, I don't think it, it is that helpful. Well, I think you could, but you have to be less pessimistic. Like if you want to be like the the beam of light that people are drawn to, you can't be like we're the planet's gonna just we're all be dead in three years anyway. So I don't think I yeah, that can't be the. Can't I be say the I say that to you. I don't say that publicly. Well, right, but eventually it's gonna come out. People can feel it, Brian. <laughs> feel it radiating <laughs> off of you. I, 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 I feel like everything that's happening is just the the matrix breaking down. Right. I think I think that it's just been. I and now Elon Musk is going to crash his rocket into the moon, um, which I swear is going to mess up my period because it's going to screw up the tides. If that's his rocket. Mm-hmm. That's his rocket. Mm-hmm. It is. No, oh, oh, of course. Who, who else's rocket would it be? Who who would make it a rocket that Asshole. doesn't go where it's supposed to go? It's absolutely gonna f- mess with the periods. I hate him. all of the periods. All of the periods. Yeah. I. I. But it might actually help the world because if all the women are angry for longer periods of time than just the week before that maybe we'll just take over there'll be a lot more focused yeah the anger will because we'll we'll have time to kind of like get used to it yeah have your migraines been worse my migraines or Uh rachel's well i know hers mine have been worse mine have been worse but I don't know. I think I always think they're worse and then I get a worse one. So I always think like frequent? how much, how much worse can it be? Um, I, for a while I stopped having migraines and, and now they've started again. So they, they are more frequent. Mine have like, I think about it. at least doubled in amount of them I get. But not talk about it, a reminder, a reminder that you're alive, Brian, you should get more migraines because that, that's a reminder. <laughs> I could just kick you every time we pass in the hallway too, if you if you want. Just a little kick to let you know that you're alive. Is that the best solution you can come up with? No, but it's a solution. <laughs> it's the best one. It's, it's tapping the bottom of the of the coffee pot eight times. <laughs> the best solution to that? I don't think so. I didn't say I was saying. I could, you know, we could, I could take you out to, to, you know, the ocean. You could have a, you know, I'm the king of the world moment or something. And that, that might be the best one, but that's not easy to do. So yeah, kicking in the hallway and tapping the coffee pot or what we have to work with. Brian, you got to adapt. Yes. I have a, I have another question for you, Brian. How has being a step parent changed you? That makes me feel alive. It takes me out of my head. Um, it, it, it brings me into reality because, uh, you know, he's a tornado and I, I don't know what's going to happen at any given moment. So it's, it's wonderful and it's, uh, it's beautiful and it's moving to watch or well, listen to him grow, um, and, um, mature and he's hilarious. Um, so, that that is wonderful but it also makes me realize how 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 much time is is slipping away their kids uh, do that They're because great. as it is you know it just makes me realize wow i mean he's he's growing up and i'm getting older and uh there's no time but i think i think kids remind you that time is short because it does fly by um but also, I, 
I have this theory about how they heal the broken parts of us because we're able to ensure that these children don't have to go through some of the harm and trauma that we did. And so we get to be there as the people to stop it for them when people weren't able to stop it for us. And so I think that that's super healing. Has there been anything that the tornado has healed in you, Brian? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like, um, you know, I'm, I'm a human being, you know, and I, 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 I'm, I, I think what it, 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 not it, but him, (laughs) it, (laughs) it, uh, um, I, I feel like he reminds me, um, to be patient. He reminds me to be loving he reminds he reminds me of 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 what it is to be a compassionate empathetic and 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 loving human being and um and it also reminds me that you know i have to i have to be because it's important for him to um you know witness that in his own life because if he doesn't you know um it's he's going to emulate that uh you know I think the the most important thing is not externalizing pain onto others. Um, and, and so I, I think I had, like, I wrote a a Facebook post about an epiphany I had about, you know, my, my, my fear was when I met Rachel, that I would not be able to offer him anything of value, um, because I wouldn't be able to teach him things or, you know, um, and so on. And, and I thought, well, you know, the one thing that came to my mind one day was that I, I just have to, I really just have to endure all the hardships with like, you know, dignity and grace. And that will be something that he will see. Um, if that makes sense. I, I don't think that we're supposed to teach kids. We're supposed to learn from them. So I'm not so. saying teach. I'm not saying teach. You I'm said there saying. were things that, that you couldn't show them how to do, but I don't think. No, I no, don't no. Think that's- what I meant was like, <laughs> when I first met Rachel, I, I thought, okay, I want to teach him how to survive. You know what I mean? Like, which is like hilarious because Captain Fantastic. Have you really? seen that movie? Captain Fantastic. Have you seen that, Nicole? Maybe. With Vigo Mortensen? Highly recommend it. It's about a, it's about a father. I think I fell fell asleep. It's about a father who has a family. They live off the grid. um, And he teaches them how to like, you know, survive. And he's uh, anyway, it's a great movie for those listening and watching. I highly recommend it. I wanted to be that father. That's who I wanted to be. And I'm, and I won't be that person, but in realizing it, the van in the woods with no, and don't now you're you're cheapening it, Rachel. It's not it's, a van in the woods. Not, okay, it's a bus. I'm sorry, he lives in a bus in the woods. It's different. Does he not live in a bus in the woods? No, they don't. They have a, like a treehouse thing. Eventually, they have a treehouse. Move out. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't remember the movie, do you? That was like the first movie I showed you when we when we got together. It doesn't matter if it's treehouse or a van or a bus. <laughs> it was your own thing. It was your own trip that you were on that had nothing to do with us. And 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 I and I told you how important that movie was when I met you. Like I know, I'm, I'm like, I was like, this I is a really important movie. I want you to watch this. Can, can we not fight right now, please? Okay. So <laughs> my point is, yes, you're right. My I came into the relationship thinking that I had to teach, but then I realized all I have to be is just a loving compassionate empathetic person and that's enough i think oh i think it's more than enough with capitalism Mm. parents don't have time to teach their kids anything anyway i mean everyone's Mm. busy working and surviving yeah we keep them alive and clean and yeah and out of jail rachel what do you see as as brian enhancing the tornado's life with well, at first, um, you know, like I, like I was saying, he, he did come in with all these ideas about, um, 
parenting and about how things are supposed to be and how what you shouldn't do and what you should do. Um, and it was really very fun to watch that go to shit. <laughs> <laughs> because as any parent knows, we all have big dreams about what, you know, like, well, well I'm never going to give my kid sugar. And I, you know, and if, if I'm going to discipline this way and, and it doesn't, doesn't work that way, they do whatever the fuck they want. And then you just try to, you know, survive with them. But <laughs> watching, watching Brian go through those steps was amazing. Um, I, I, it was very early on when he, when he sneezed in your mouth, I think was. Yeah. It, uh, I, I turned around to say something to him and he sneezed right in my face. I thought it was going to choke. I was laughing so hard. I guess <laughs> it gets just a look on his face and that's a good, you know, euphemism for just the whole process of him. Um, Brian's being like, okay, well, we're, but we're not going to do this. And, and then like two years later, he's like, Hmm, sounds like he's coughing. Maybe he needs some Benadryl. I'm like, there you are. Now you're a parent. Right. <laughs> Cause I think the first time I made the, the Benadryl joke, he's like, that's terrible. We should never drug our children. I'm like, really? You sure about that? Give it a minute. Um, but, uh, I, I have a, you know, my son and I had a very tumultuous start um, because I was pregnant with him when I had cancer and um, I, his father and I had a very uh, dramatic end and um, then my father was sick. And so his first three years were spent in hospitals and at doctor's appointments and with family members because I was going through surgeries and uh, listening to his father and I scream at each other and um sitting and then and being ignored so a lot of the time because I had my hands so full with my father's care and my own care like I'm going through cancer treatment myself and my dad's going through his end of life stuff and I'm the only person handling either thing and I'm also working and I'm also in the middle of a high conflict custody case with his dad and it was just overwhelming and so I wasn't able to get down on the floor with him and play you know and do those things that are so vital at that age and he was speech delayed and he was a feral I, we, we both were we were both a little feral and his dad's a little feral. His bio dad is pretty, is, that's his baseline really. And um, Brian had a calmness and a, and a peace and a patience about him that um, my, my son was never around or had any you know, access to. It just, I was always on 11. His biological dad's pretty much, that's his baseline is 11. And Brian became a safe place for him. Um, I had had a bunch of chest surgeries when he was born and I had a very hard time carrying him. Uh, and when he got older, when he was like two, he was, he didn't like, you know, he's just, he's very stubborn. He's very strong-willed and he'll thrash and, and he would fight me with stuff. So getting him in and out of the car just to go to the grocery store was an hour to two hour ordeal where I was almost always in tears because I couldn't physically put him in his car seat if he didn't want to be in it. So I had to wait him out. And if he didn't want to leave the zoo, I, there was no way for me to physically force him or pick him up and take him out of anywhere. So it was just a constant thing. And there was several times when I was alone with him and I had no help and I, you know, would, would almost drop him because if he was, you know, upset and wiggling or something, I couldn't hang on to him. And sometimes I just fall with him and just, you know, land so that he landed on me, but I, I, or I'd try to get him just close enough to the crib. So if I, if I dropped him, it wouldn't be very far, but um, the first time that he allowed Brian to pick him up, he wrapped his arms around his neck right and, and I heard Brian say, oh, it's okay, buddy. What's the matter? Did somebody drop you or something? And I just burst into tears because yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, he never got hurt being dropped, but yeah, he, he, he'd never had sturdy arms before. Um, his biological father has, has a physical disability as well that has one of his arms not work. So he, he struggled with him as well. It would take both of us to pin him down to get him in PJs. And Brian was the first person who so he felt secure in his arms being carried around. And I think that's a good example of what he does for him all the way around is he's a safe, steady, reliable thing that he knows is always, you know, is strong and always going to be there. And he, he really, I was so sad when Brian said that because I'm like, yes, I dropped him. Because he had, he had been, I mean, he hadn't been. I, I kind of think all kids get dropped at least once. He didn't get dropped any more than any other kid. Let's just put it that way. Like, you know, he did the, like every kid, he does the, the first time they roll, you find out because they fall off something. But, <laughs> but no, I mean, just I, I, always Brian, like, just, yeah, Brian, don't ask kids that because they all have a moment of. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, I, but he also, you know, he also kind of, um, you know, he picks on Brian a little bit because he's so safe. And so, oh, yeah. So that's, you know, so I try to, um, but it's, it's all, I get worried about it sometimes, but then when I talk to him privately about it, he's, he's, 
kid's on the right track. He's just, he's just being a brat. He just doesn't want Brian to know how much he likes him. And he'll say that. I love Brian. No, they, they always, children are always more aggressive with the safest person because yeah. they need to act out all of their aggression from un- people who are not as safe for them with the safe person. They, they need that spot. Um, so yeah, I had a hard time with my oldest with that, where I'm, I'm the safe ish person. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, a lot of his anger, you know, would come to a head with me as opposed to his father. Well, so. but the amount and the amount of compassion that, um, he has when it, because of knowing Brian and being around him and, and knowing what he struggles with, he's very conscious of other people. Um, which I think is such a huge, you know, thing that's going to be so good for him in his life. And uh, the only thing that I think is is an issue is I think Brian is still not totally um, secure with his place with him. And he's, you know, steps backs off when he maybe shouldn't and um, gives him a little too much space, a little too much, you know, leeway. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the other thing is, Brian, you were saying, you know, you want to teach him how to survive. You want to teach him how to, but he, he's going to like eat us. Like if the apocalypse comes, he'll be fine. <laughs> he's, he's all right. He'll be totally fine. In fact, I hope he leads us all because he will survive, but um, he's so interested in acting and in performing and in impressions and in mimicking animals and stuff. And, and I dancing. I feel like I know someone in the house who might have a degree in some of those things who might, you know, that's a thing. Like the one thing that he would love to be doing is the, is one of the things that Brian could absolutely teach him how to do and, and coach him and work with him with. He doesn't, but he, but he doesn't, he's decided he can't play baseball, which neither of them like at all. So <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> they both hate, hate baseball, but he can't do that. So that's, that makes him an inadequate father, father. But the one thing that he would, well, not the one thing, but the a major thing that he would love to learn more about. Somebody. That's, in, that's interesting. I, you know, children have a way of tapping into our subconscious and it, you, you hear it in some of the things that they, sometimes they will come out with some things that are so awkward for you, <laughs> but they're really, you know, calling you out on what you have going on back here um yeah my middle my daughter always asked me how how I managed to stay so chubby (laughs) and it's not and it's not in a negative way at all she just absolutely loves it and is fascinated by my ability to stay chubby so that's now my my superpower is being chubby um but I maybe somehow he's tapping into and connecting with Brian on what Brian's passions are and sort of taking that on as his way to stay attached to Brian in that way. That's interesting. Brian, are you still with us? Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> just checking. I'm yeah, wait, did you have any thoughts on what Rachel said about Specifically what? You can? what? about what you can teach the tornado? Yeah, I, I you know, uh, I'm, I'm still learning, but like you said, it's, you know, uh, I, I, I mean, I think I'm learning with him. And uh, I think, uh, you know, if we can, you know, I, I, I feel like it's, so our, our relationship is, 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 is growing stronger. And I feel like, um, you know, I, I like all the, the things, I mean, he's always engaging with me, you know, we're, we're always engaging with each other. So as long as, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy. I, I, I really, I, I love him and, and, and I love what he is developing into. I've only caught him trying to trip Brian on the stairs once, just one time. Did he really? He stuck his hand in the slats and he looked at me. I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, this is going to be hilarious. I'm like, no, you little sociopath. It's not. It's not that. That's the only time though. That's that one time. I think it's just, he just didn't know, like, 
it was low on the stairs. So maybe he felt like he wouldn't fall very far. So it wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> I don't know, but he doesn't like hide. Yeah, Brian, Brian's not laughing. <laughs> Other, well, otherwise, I mean, I would expect a lot more shenanigans from uh, especially him, but he, he is very good about picking, you know, staying, keeping stuff out of Brian's trail and he doesn't hide his stuff or he doesn't, um, sometimes he won't answer him when he's looking for him, which is something we're working on, but he doesn't answer me either sometimes. So. Um, well, I, yeah. you know, one, one of the things that I thought was he has to answer Brian specifically because Brian can't see him. It's not cool to, to do that, but he doesn't right. answer anybody. One was well, something that happened recently that I thought was really beautiful was, um, Rachel and, um, uh, the tornado were watching TV and, um, uh, Rachel had to go to the bathroom, but I, I don't know what you did with the remote, but like she turned up the TV, like super loud. Like it was, it was like theater like level loud and um and i like i was upstairs and i ran down and i was like trying to i didn't know where the remote was and i i asked you know i asked him where's the remote and and uh and he went to, and i was reaching you know looking for it and i knocked over some of his legos that were on his little play table and and uh, he gave me the remote and i turned down the volume and i'm like i'm I, i'm sorry i didn't mean to uh you know, knock over your Legos. And he said, Oh, it's, it's okay. It's not your fault. And I, I was just, I thought that was very empathetic and, and, and compassionate of him to say that, you know, um, yeah, cause he would have yelled at me. <laughs> he would have been pissed if I did that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was not only what he said, but it was how he said it. He's like, no, no, no. He was like, he was trying to be reassuring. And he meant it. Yeah. He meant it. It wasn't yeah. just something that he was mimicking. Like it, yeah. it came from someplace. No, he meant, and he likes to, um, he likes to practice being blind. He'll pretend that he's, he'll close his eyes and ask to be led or, or, you know, he'll use Brian's cane around the house and, and, and it's, it's, um, it's like, he's trying to relate, like he's trying to figure out, um, what it's like for Brian. You know, and we've how hard it how hard it is. He was probably like, ah, oh, if he could do it, I could do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we talked about we just it was actually he's so he's it, lately he hasn't been saying I love you or gonna he hasn't been very like verbally and, and it has to do with his age and and you know his his bio dad and his loyalty and whatever. So you know I tell Brian just to you know give him a minute. He'll that's this is normal. Um but we were in the car alone the other night and he asked me um he said, he just brought up, no, he said the other, the other day, or he didn't say the other day, but he's like, I remember seeing Brian cry. And I said, well, when? So this was a long time ago. I was like, oh, okay. Well, he's like, yeah, he was in the hallway. I saw him and he was crying. I said, well, why was he crying? Was he mad at me? <laughs> and he said, no, you were trying to make him feel better. And I said, oh, well, uh, I don't know when that was, but I think it probably had to do with him getting used to, to not having his sight because it's really hard. Um, and he's like, well, but why does it make him cry? And I said, well, think about it. Like everything that he wanted to do, you know, and I just kind of explained kind of the loss and he, and I said, you know, sometimes he doesn't feel like, like he, he can be the best dad to you because there's certain things he can't do with you. And he got upset and he went, that's not true. Why does he think that? And he got really mad. He's like, that's stupid. <laughs> so of course he can. And I said, well, I'm just saying that he, sometimes he feels like if he could do all the things that he would be a better dad to you. And, and he's like, well, that's not true. He's, he's a great dad, just how he is. And I, and I said, well, and the other thing is you're not very nice to him sometimes. And you won't say, tell him that you love him when you say you do to me. And, you know, so he doesn't always know that he's a great dad He goes, well, I love him. He is a great, I said, well, then why don't you tell him? He's like, you should tell him. <laughs> I said, I tell him all the time. It sounds better coming from you. If it's true, you should tell him. He went, <sighs> all right, I'll tell him when we get home. And then we got to home and he went, okay, you tell him. <laughs> tell him you tell him. And so we came inside and I said, Brian, he has something he wants to say to you. And he hid behind me and like pushed me and said, you do it, you do it. <laughs> and so I did. And then didn't he come over and give you a big hug afterwards? He did. Yeah. And then I thought that was really, cause you know, like he's kind of a, he picks on him a little bit. <laughs> and he'll probably be like, good night. I love you. And he'll go, hmm. <laughs> or hiss at him like a cat or something. So, you know, but that, that all means I, I love you. Yeah. It really does. All of it does. Yeah. And is, he's that, always, is that when you, Nicole, you t tell me to go fuck myself? Is that, 
It, it's uh, that absolutely is true. I asked Rachel to tell you that I love you and she wouldn't. So I just resort to telling you to go fuck yourself. I told him to go <laughs> fuck himself. I thought, I thought that's what you meant. <laughs> well, and then I learned but from the last time I told Brian to fuck off is that there's these, that the emoji, I said, I wish I could send you the middle finger emoji. And he says, you can, because um, it will do the, the voice thing for him. Yeah, it'll describe it. it. Yeah. So do yeah. You, yeah, you can flip him off by text. So I do now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All the time. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as much fun now that you know what it means. It was more fun when you thought I was actually telling you to fuck off. You're just so. going <laughs> to ratchet it up a little bit. So, so I love you, Brian, which actually means fuck off. Yeah. You should oh, feel, okay. You should feel like it. <laughs> it's confusing. This is a very confusing relationship. It, it's all confusing. <laughs> yours and mine or yours and Rachel's? Like, yours and mine. It's Rachel and I are practically the same person. Yeah. Really? So our relationship with each other makes perfect sense to me. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think we are practically, the, don't you, Rachel? We're very similar. Yeah, absolutely. You're a better writer. Hey, I don't know what I'm better at. Maybe a lot something. Of stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe I'm a better driver. Do you drive well? Uh, I drive. I drive. Well, I learned to drive in Oakland and LA. So probably it depends that much. Depends oh. on you. So uh, for here, I think I'm a great driver, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I drive too fast. Probably. Here, driving's way too easy. Yeah. It's way too easy. The only thing you have to worry about are deer. Deer and, and older adults. Oh, no, I, I don't worry about them. Just the deer. The deer, yeah. Anyway, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Brian's. You didn't have a by the way? I didn't have the by the way. Oh, I did. I, well, I did find your list, though. Oh, I fell for it. I thought there was a by the way. No, I didn't. I, have thought, you're, I thought you were going to tell me you hit a deer. No, I was trying to think of what to say. And I couldn't think of anything. And I was getting un like quickly uncomfortable because that makes me nervous when there's dead airspace. That's why. I oh, you hate you hate deer, though. I do know that. I do hate deer. Yeah, deer. Can I, hate, like, I like hate John deer Hall. Too. They can I hate deer, it. too. They're assholes. I I. I think they're just, they're just walking tick factories. They're giant Paris, like they're giant garden eating. That's tick what Paris. John Hall said. Yeah. The Hall and Oates. He was right. Tick factories. Or he did say the... that. And he shoots deer from his porch. Oh, I don't, I don't shoot them. I just yell at them. Yeah. He got Lyme disease. That's why he's so angry about it. I don't even yell at them. I'm just like passive aggressive at them because ours are super, they come really close. They don't care. They're not scared. So I'm like, oh, why don't you just make yourself at home? And I try to just kind of like bitch at them. It doesn't really do much. We, we have one that sleeps in the bushes right next to the house. And I'm always afraid when I'm walking by the bushes, it's going to freak out and just attack me. Yeah, isn't there and like a, could happen. Uh, isn't there some ticks. comedy movie where there's just a deer attacks the person in the car, like they hit it and they put it in the car and then it comes alive. I, I, th I feel like there's... <laughs> We have a mountain lion that comes through every once in a while, like get as many as you can, get them. Oh, yeah, I yeah, I don't know about the mountain lions. They I leave your parts in the yard though, so that's uh, that's worrisome. <laughs> There's one that lives really close to the house. <laughs> well, you found that the deer leg. Yes, I found a deer leg in the front yard. And Brian's I mom. found, yeah, I found a deer leg. And I, like, I, I, oh, it was hit by a car. I'm like, no, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Because where's the rest of it? And then when the neighbors, the, the tree fell on their house and they had to move out, then when they were cleaning up, they had a big dumpster. And then I heard them retching and going, <laughs> and like dragging. I'm like, oh, there's the rest of it. They found the rest of it. <gasps> oh, I guess at least the mountain lion didn't come back for it. No. Maybe. I don't know. So let's talk about the 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 our, our new podcast. Um, I'm I'm commandeering this for a moment. Uh, <laughs> so Nicole, you had mentioned. By the way, let's talk about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk so, about me for a minute. Let's yeah. let even though this is Brian centric episode, let's let's talk about uh, our podcast. So before we started we were talking about it and you were saying you felt that like 
this podcast was a way for me to kind of record uh, my relationships with people and have so that I have them um, as a memory. So I could, I could listen to them as my hearing and sight faded away. Now, I want to say that was not the intention behind this podcast. However, you are correct because I started to feel like, yes, this is, I, I'm doing it now as a, kind of an obsessive thing of trying to capture these moments with, with people that I know uh, because it is, it is something that I'll have. I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's something that I can always return to and remember that moment in, in a vivid way um, and capture that. And it, it, that wasn't the, the, the catalyst for this podcast, but it became that. So I wanted to tell you you were correct in that. Oh, I knew I was right, even though you didn't know I was right. In the <laughs> no, I, I think it's really important that, I mean, not only if you're losing your sight and your hearing to do, but just for people in general to remember to do is is to connect with people who are not only important to them but who have created moments in your life that changed who you are in some way you know I think mm -hmm. everybody you encounter does that but there's some people that are more significant maybe because of time or just some event that happened so I I think it's it's really interesting that you're doing it, but also I think that there shouldn't have to be a catalyst for people to do it. I think that we need to, to do this more often. I mean, for a while, Rachel and I would go back and forth um, on the Facebook that she loves. Yeah, she's not on that. Facebook anymore. She's in <laughs> Facebook jail. Yeah, that, I don't. I don't get <gasps> that. But... Oh, people are. <laughs> mm. She's she's muted herself because she's yelling at her family. <laughs> <laughs> can you see it? No, I can just see her because um, the dog is barking. Um, but I will say sorry. That, okay, I was, I was gonna say I will say that um, you know Brian has brought on a couple of my friends, my old good friends. And um, that's been awesome for me to, to sit down and, you know, reconnect some of them I hadn't talked to in, in a couple of years um, because we're doing our own thing or whatever. And some of them I, I stay in pretty constant touch with, but not sit down and talk about them with them for two hours. Like that's been great. Uh, the talk with Fritz was awesome. I really enjoyed that. I got a lot out of that personally. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there doesn't have to be, have to be, my catalyst is Brian, <laughs> is Brian inviting all my friends on the show to talk, but it's, it's been really great to do that um but i don't know i don't know how we translate that into something that's more appealing on a large basis unless we just add more blind guy jokes because that's what's working for us on tiktok well part of it is you know i <laughs> want i want us to be able to spend more time working on content and part of the, you know, the issue of, of this situation is I'm so exhausted all the time, like right now, that well, I do don't. You, how do you think we're going to work on more content? If, if, you know? I don't know. But I, I think that if somebody, uh, you know, is, is helping producing it, it'll create a little bit more time to do that. Because then I'm not focusing on all the technical uploading and, you know, all that other things that, you know, actually... Uh, probably for somebody who's able body wouldn't take as long as it would me. So um, that's something that, you know, I think would be, you know, that's what I, I feel like. That's what I have to do. I have to find ways where I'm not utilizing unnecessary time. If that, that makes sense. Uh, I probably doesn't, but um, that I'm not, I mean, that's what I mean is like the time that takes to upload and to the write the descriptions and do all that stuff. I mean, it, you know, and, and to just start at the computer, all that stuff takes, takes, takes more time than for most people. So if I can eliminate that, it'll create more time for creating content. I, I, Did everybody leave? <laughs> no, you, so you, you, 
you're looking for a producer, somebody to produce. Yeah, that's part of Basically. it. Yes. Yeah, and because I, you know, it, it, yeah, that would be that would be really helpful. I think because I think that it, it if if Rachel and I can focus on content, it'll be a lot easier uh, uh, in terms of of creating uh, just creating in general. So, are we like hiring somebody? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I, I wanted to put it out into the universe and see what happens, you know? Um, so I don't know. The universe doesn't want what you want. Though. That's true. It doesn't. For the most part, it does not want what I want. So maybe I shouldn't put anything in the maybe universe. You say the opposite of what you want and don't let the universe hear you. I think the universe knows you- deep inside what I want. There's no escaping destiny. That was so creepy, Brian. What? <laughs> Wasn't it creepy, Rachel, the way you said it? Or is it just me? He's, Maybe he's, I just think you're creepy. He's either Maybe that's what it is. over over polite or he yeah, or he just what 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 was the what was the part that was creepy? <laughs> that you said you wanted the universe up inside you and it knows what you want. If we were That's in a bar, would you would you think that I'm creepy if you didn't know me? Uh, the polite part, yeah. I, I, yeah, you're hiding something. <laughs> yeah, you're you're overly mm-hmm. formal. You're overly formal, and you don't give anything up. Like you don't you don't reciprocate with the question things, and you ask a lot of questions. I don't. But that's okay. It, it's okay. I thought that I thought you wanted the the new thing to be about something else. Well, I want Rachel and I to. I I, I would like us to create different. Like this is a bit mainly a conversation, like this this podcast. It's a conversation with uh, Rachel and I with somebody else usually. Um, but I think we can create different scenarios and different, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say bits, um, things that will uh, kind of uh, make the show interesting and uh, attract people to watch it, not only for who may be on in addition to us, but, you know, I, that's the, the idea. The other thing is, you know, the, how this started was with Gustavo. And, and it was a very different, you know, it was, it had a social justice kind of edge to it. And I, I was not able to, to get that at all. Like, I mean, uh, I, I, I attempted to do it and then I realized it's not me. I'm not, I'm not a social justice warrior. I, I have issues that I, I care about and, and, and believe in, but I don't think I'm the person that should be, you know, trying to i don't know i i i i i I, if i'm going to be the change that i wish to see in the world it's it's going to be forever it needs to be funnier and funnier because yeah i mean because that was the thing i was telling about the social justice thing i'm like that but Mm. he was so into it and it was so in depth and like but no one wants to hear i mean everybody's everybody knows how terrible everything is they don't want to listen to a podcast about it you know we all we're, we're looking for escape typically, or, you know, at least a, a satirical view of what's going on or, or something that takes us out of the perpetual misery that we're all experiencing right now. We don't want to like grind it in <laughs> like deeper and, and really just, I, I feel like, I feel like Joe Rogan already has that market cornered about how yeah. shitty the world is by the guests he has on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, and then, you know, the TikTok did really well when we were being silly. So obviously that, that you know as far as other people enjoying us that's a direction that worked for us but i'm not an actress so i can only i can only you know i can only act so much it's got to be really close to to real life (laughs) i can't i can't play a character you know i can pair i can play an exaggerated version of myself and that's pretty much it brian snyder i think i'm an exaggerated version of brian (laughs) (laughs) uh you don't you don't ask enough questions i don't think brian brian would have gotten like 18 more in by now 
And Did you would... have more questions? Do I? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> well, maybe we should we should wrap it up then. I could, well, let me read some of Brian's first because I, I have a list. What? By the way, who is Callie? Are you, by the way, are you still within U.S. borders? By the way, you told me who that guy in that photo was once. What's his name? By the way, please leave that thing on your nose alone. Please put some antibiotic ointment on it. By the way, I realized over dinner what I needed to hear you say when I called you. Um, by the way, what was that Depeche Mode song you were talking about? By the way, leaving leave some padding in the return time in case there's a delay. By the way, uh, do you what do you think about a woman's death positive series called Posy Filled Pussies? By the way, do you work in the mortuary on Friday? By the way, did you pay your rent? By the way, where did you look at those calendars? By the way, would Mick call me a pussy? By the way, do you own Nike workout shorts? By the way, I love your cancer balls, which is not a question. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, a paper mask won't help. By the way, did you set up the air purifier? By the way, type typing in sex acts on Wikipedia. By the way- what? Wikipedia, Say that last one again. Type typing in sex acts on Wikipedia. I, I can't explain that to you, Brian. You said it on me. Mm -hmm. I think Brian was typing in. He was like, by the way, <laughs> like, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> are you, are you my, my, my manically cleaning? By the way, did you get my last four texts? Oh, by the way. <laughs> by the way, when you when don't you, forget to eat the grilled cheese. <laughs> I do. I don't know. Remember why I did this. But if you do type in sex acts and with Wikipedia, Wikipedia, there are there are uh, drawings of, 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 of like graphic sex, sex acts. <laughs> see this I mean, I could see better obviously when I did that. So that was early on in the relationship. So that was obviously 2018 somewhere like, in there. I like, by the way, did you get my last four texts? By the way, did you get my last three texts? <laughs> That's I get those a lot. Did you get my last text? By the way, see my last text. Um, by the way, can we sing this duet? You can do the Joe Cocker part. Maybe it's ringing bells for context, Brian. And well, it's obviously Beep. lift us up where Beep. we belong. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm still working. I'm pulling them out of our texts. Okay. Well, Nicole, I, I, is, there, is by the way, I read I have several fans blowing in the bedroom as I have several fans that I'm blowing in the bedroom. That's a good, by the way. Blowing? <laughs> You said, by the way, I read, I have several fans blowing in the bedroom as I have several fans that I'm blowing in the bedroom. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Nicole, um, I've started to ask, um, you know, individuals the following two questions. And I like to ask you these questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> If you could speak to every living creature on earth in their own language at the same time, what would you say to them? Really? <laughs> that's what I, I think that's what I would say. Really? <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, what? Oh, what? What? Else? I mean, everyone's so different and everything's so different. You can resist the question. That's all right. That's fair I, enough. No, I, I mean, it, it, I, I really feel like that's, a, you know, a one-on-one -on -one thing, a, a blanket statement to all things. <laughs> You're I supposed mean, to say like, be peaceful or love. But I know that's not possible. STFU is what I would say to everyone. Blanket statement. But see, some, some creatures and people are nice. That's true. And maybe I want to hear what they have to say. But I think of it as if you were, if there was a, you had the power of a, an omnipotent being and you could speak to them in a way that they'd really listen. Oh, don't be dicks. I think that's what Rachel would say. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be dicks. Did, yeah. Isn't that what you did say, Rachel? I, yeah, I probably was my answer to that. I, I told you mm -hmm. we're the same same person. Yeah, because it's it's okay to not like things. It's okay, but don't be a dick about it. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this one: What would uh, be written? What would your epitaph be? No. 
I was a dick. <laughs> it should just be no. Just no. I think everybody knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> right? Don't they? What, that you're a dick? Yeah. Well, probably. Brian? You have not been a dick to me. Oh, that's such a lie. That's <laughs> such a lie. We just that had a conversation a about lie. how she's intentionally addicted. You have not been a dick okay. to me that I that I can remember. What about the time? What about the time that I drove you and Michael four hours in the wrong direction, screaming and yelling in the car at both of you? You were so awkward. You wanted me to stop. <laughs> I wouldn't stop. Michael By the way, I was not involved in that conversation. That was you and Michael. <laughs> that was totally you and right, Michael. Right, but but you wanted it to stop. Michael wound up having to have an operation shortly afterwards. And I still, are I you no blaming regrets. yourself for that? No, not at all. He was already, he was already in pain. It, I blame Michael for arguing with me while he was in pain. He should have known better. He should have. Everybody should know better. I'm a dick. <laughs> but you didn't that that had i was not involved in that so i that was between you and michael was it awkward don't you feel like it was kind of dickish to do to you as a guest in the car or i thought it was a, a fair um you know conversation i mean you were you were both well, being respectful say, you weren't like were we because i remember <laughs> yelling at michael i remember i don't remember that. i distinctly remember yelling at him I don't recall you yelling. Maybe inside you wanted to yell? No, I was yelling and you try to change the subject. Did I say I by the way? You. No, you didn't. But you were like, maybe maybe we should talk about something else. Oh, no, that doesn't, <laughs> I said, no. I, I, that does, that's not, doesn't sound like me at all. I would not say that. You would say maybe we shouldn't talk about this right now. No. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say that either. I, I mean, you were really, I, I'm pretty you were sure. Ups, I, you were upset I'm, enough for me to know not to say that. You did, you did try to steer the conversation and I just wasn't done. But, the, and Michael wouldn't stop either. That was a train that was not stopping <laughs> for you. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, I don't really remember what it was even about. He blocked it out. It, 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 it was that uh, Michael said something about freedom of speech. And I said that now I remember speech now I remember does not exist unless everybody has freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is not even a thing and not everybody does. So it's, it's not, I, rem I remember exactly what it was about. So it wasn't like a relationship argument. It was like a, ideology like right I, yeah because i like i was like a um awkward couples fight but it sounds like that wasn't the case well oh and i'm still traumatized somebody just the other day said something about freedom of speech and i just like started clawing at my own throat trying to stop myself from yelling at them where were you on the internet <laughs> No, it was just, it was just the other day. Um, so I met, somebody was in town for lunch. I met them at the Wild Eye Pub and their dad and brother had gone someplace else. And they said, oh, they were arguing about Joe Rogan. And then they came to pick her up. And I said, oh, I heard you guys are fighting about Joe Rogan. And the brother said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a Joe Rogan stand, but you know, freedom of speech. Right. And I was just like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> can, you, can you explain to me how Joe Rogan became even remotely relevant enough to become the center point of anything at all? Like any national discussion? Cause that's the idiot that used to make people eat bugs on a TV show. Like who the fuck is that's, he? that's why, <laughs> because he diversified his his what he did is he was a he started it was a, he was an actor he was on news radio so he had that exposure he has that audience then he has yeah. the audience of his stand-up comedy then he has the audience of yeah. fear factor 
And then he has the audiences of his mixed martial, the UFC stuff. So he built a huge audience over the years. Yeah. He diversified. Yeah. And then, and then he tried to be Howard Stern 2.0 shock right. jock. Um, but really he's just an ass. The baboon's ass. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to agree with that. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see why. I, I mean, yeah, he can say whatever he wants. It's just, does it have to be so stupid and loud? Like, just turn the mic. I on. see, and I, I don't see. Now I'm going to yell at you, Rachel, because I don't oh, think no. that he, he can say or that he should say whatever he wants. Because well, no, I don't think. I'm not saying he should. I'm just saying he, he can't. Obviously, he can because they're not pulling him, right? So right, going to do whatever he wants, right? Um, it's Brian. You know what? Did you see what Brian just has his reaction? He wants us to fight so bad, but he pretends like he's he, from day one. That yeah. has always been his desire. Yeah. He even said, I, I don't know if you guys are going to get along or if you're going to fight. I yeah, know he's been, he's been like hoping, hoping. Oh, oh there's a disagreement. Oh, she's going to yell her. Oh, here it is. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you notice the word she used, <laughs> Rachel? What word? Did you hear it? Well, uh, what? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. So my desire. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's a. I think that was an interesting word choice. No, I think it's valid. <laughs> no, I I think it was accurate. I stand by it. I I, I, I do. do not want violence. I I wasn't saying violent. You that's, know yeah, that women fighting ripping each other's tops off like that's where i was going with it yeah mm. oh no don't get in a fight with my yeah no I, yeah we're, yeah. we're on snyder oh no we're kissing <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no, now yeah exactly oh there's a pillow fight now they're making out yeah we know, we know what you're, where you're going with it right yeah yeah okay he's creepy i told you rachel creep i was in porn so. I don't know. I, you like it. I hope you'll get along with Nicole, but probably not. You both. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't this... know her, but you know what she said about you. You both have pretty strong personalities, and I'm a little worried. She didn't like <laughs> a little girl that I just recently flirted with. She feels she's yeah. a little. Oh, that was. She's a little protective of me. <laughs> oh, see, he remembered. See, he re remembered. He remembered. <laughs> he he was secretly bitter that I cock blocked. <laughs> Don't be. A I was not. It was for the greater good. Um, I do think that they should pull Joe. I don't think he should be allowed to. That's not what I meant. I just mean he's going to and is. Um, I don't think he should have a platform, but that's between him and Spotify, I guess. We went and back to Joe Rogan. And then how many billions did did they just lose over it? I hope that I, two million. Two, two, I think two or yeah. one. One billion it was or something. I don't know. That's a ridiculous amount of money anyway for them to have to lose anyway. right in the first place. Yeah, I was well, like, so I didn't even I think didn't. they had that. Well, 200 million, they're paying Joe Rogan 200 million to be exclusive. So yeah, they've got that. Oh, yuck. Ugh. And I think that was the problem was they're, they're not going to, you know, like they made that deal with him. So they're not going to drop him, but then they're losing way more than that. So. Well, there's your, there's your new podcast. Yeah. We got to get in that, get in there. What do, yeah. what do we uh, Be grosser than Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. <laughs> 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 well, uh, this was the blind man in black. <laughs> Nicole, thank you so much. Uh, I I, I wish that we would. I wanted to learn more about you. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for uh, for doing this. Well, thank like you that, for letting was, me. I, I like that it was Brian centric because he he dev, he never lets anyone do that. I know. I tried to do it in that in that way. He went and he fought me the whole way, but he doesn't fight you like he fights me. He, he's are we gonna spend him. more? <laughs> are we gonna spend more time together? In in this year. You and I, or you and Rachel. All of us. Oh, of course, 
of course. The the end is near, so we have to. While we can. Yep. Didn't Guy McPherson say we in 2018 we had five years left? Oh my gosh. Wow. Was that 2018? We did. That was Brian, that was the most depressing experience I've ever had in my life. And I've had <laughs> some pretty depressing experiences. Mm. That was really awful. The only the only high point was when I yelled at you and this guy thought we were a couple. Did you, you yell at me? That? I do remember that that well, happened, but I don't remember I wasn't, you yelling at me. I wasn't seriously yelling at you, but because you couldn't see, you sat someplace else and you had originally been sitting next to me. And, you know, I jokingly like snapped at you and said, what, you don't want to sit next to me? And he was like, oh, I could tell you guys have been together for a really long time. <laughs> 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 but I don't think you caught what was happening, Brian. And then you're like, what did he say? And I was like, oh, he thinks we're a couple. And I played along with it. Because he's mm. yelling at you in public, because that that pretty that usually denotes, yeah, long term. That's the other <laughs> that's issue. What, that's all Rachel does. That's all Rachel does. Yeah, but I like to fake yell at him. I like to say things like, oh my God, hurry up. You're so slow. Like stuff like that. That because I think that's funny. <laughs> I like to make him carry everything and then they go, come on. You're <laughs> I have places to be. You're taking up too much time. Well, we love you, Nicole. Thank you for hosting this episode. Uh, I apologize. My energy was a little low. I don't know. I thought I was more exhausted than I thought I was. But uh, well, and, yeah, and I made you answer some emotional question. So no, no I I said I, I don't know. I just no, that's what it was. That's what it was. Was it? Was it? Well, yeah, but yeah. I I started off. I was I I couldn't speak. No, that's true. So something was something's going on. I don't know. All right. Well, I hope it's not the Bell's palsy. And, uh... <laughs> That'll be the name of our uh, podcast. The Bell's palsy. <laughs> hope it's not the Bell's palsy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, this is the beginning of the end for the Blind Man in Black. We are ending on a hundredth episode, uh, hoping to start a new podcast um, and uh, looking for collaboration. If anybody's interested, just silence. That's all there is. (laughs) Anyone? (laughs) All right, everybody. Uh, Thank you for watching on YouTube and listening on Apple Podcast. Uh, Nicole, do you have anything you'd like to plug? No, I don't. Rachel? Anything I want to plug? I don't have anything <laughs> to plug, except for this and, and the TikTok. Brian, I, I, I want to plug Brian. And but plug Brian. And <laughs> yeah, you can see me do stand-up comedy at the Wild Eye Pub uh, sometime the first of the month. Uh, I will be doing it in March, April, May, hopefully. I don't know how much time we have left. Guy Guy McPherson said five years, and that was yeah. if we have we have one year left, right? Yeah, twenty twenty three. If anyone would like to 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 <laughs> sponsor my my script writing, that'd be great. That's the only plug. Yeah, I'd have to be doing something that was finished to plug anything. <laughs> Same. Okay. All right, we're we're gonna leave with this energy or this this yeah, awkward this, energy. We're, yeah, it's where we awkward. Where we're gonna. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I would say rate, subscribe, and the review, but I, I don't know if that's necessary anymore. It's over, so we're not even going to try anymore from here on. <laughs> <laughs> <don't care. laughs> All right, everybody. Um, thank you for listening and watching. And now we're going to have our really awkward ending, a real heavy. This feels real heavy, this, this episode. It's real intense. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it at that. All right. Let's have your awkward ending. Awkward ending.